Hello, dear children. Welcome to Mama Dewdrop Story Time. We have some friends with us. We have a little elf baby way over there. She has candy, candy cane stockings on, and she's holding her stocking with a candy cane hat. Hi there, baby elf. And we have Forest Truffle Bee wearing her dark green foresty sweater and her happy festive holiday dress. And we also have Teddy wearing his deer sweater and his deer, or maybe it's a moose, you decide, has a red nose. Hi there, Teddy. And we also have deer down below and three little very small babies <coughs> wearing their festive clothes. Today I'll read from a lovely book called A Donzi of Gnomes. It's by Sieglin de Francesca. Let's get started. Sweetness from the flowers, a candle from the bees, for our hearts a story, light and Tommy Tompton. A Tompton is a gnome. Winter brings cold and darkness to the land. The earth becomes hard and all the seeds sleep. Animals must search for something to eat for the winter is very long. But there are some places in the world where the animals have a caretaker. Not the kind farmer who rolls hay out for the snow and over the snow. Nor the child who remembers to feed the pet every day. Nor the kind old lady who sprinkles crumbs for the birds on the icy pavement. No, the caretaker is much smaller than these, and he's usually very careful not to be seen. He's very old and very wise to the ways of the woodland creatures. To many, he's known as a Tompton. Tommy Tompton is not very big. He is only inches by our measure. He dresses in a warm suit the color of pine needles and wears a woolen cap the color of holly berries. His long beard is as white as frost and his eyes are as bright as a little bird's. Tommy Tompton carries a sack, a generous sack, almost as big as he is. For Tommy is not only the caretaker, he is the gift giver. When he finds something he knows a friend would like or need, he puts it in his sack. His sack is rarely empty, 
so that when he finds a friend, he can pass on some happiness. There is not an animal in the forest who can say when it is December 25th. Yet all animals, when they see Tommy Tompton, know that he carries Christmas in his sack. Tommy had been foraging all morning in, in and around Limondor Woods. His sack was so full that he had to drag it behind him, leaving a strange path on the frosty ground. His first visit was to Red Squirrel's tree. In the manner that gnomes generally call on squirrels, Tommy politely tapped on the trunk of the tree with a stick. Red Squirrel peeked over a top branch to see who was knocking. When he saw the Tompton at the roots of the tree, he quickly scampered down the trunk and chattered. Good morning to you, Tommy Tompton. Tommy had already taken out three fat walnuts for his friend. He had found them the night before and could hardly wait to see red squirrels delight in them. In the cold of winter, the squirrel's own nut supply was greatly diminished. How happy Red Squirrel was. He chattered the praises of each nut as if it were made of purest gold. In fact, his chattering went on so loud and long that Tommy had to excuse himself, saying he had so many others to visit. His next friend was a little field mouse was doing very poorly because she felt the cold so much. Only that morning, Tommy had found a bit of soft wool on a briar bush. It had looked so pretty fluttering there. Though his simple gift did not lighten his pack very much, it was well received by the quiet mouse who gratefully took it to line her bare nest with its woolly warmth. The sun was quite high as Tommy sought the private place in the undergrowth where the doe waited for the dusk. Tommy courteously announced his arrival so as not to frighten her. When he stepped into her little clearing, she gently snuffled him with her soft nose. Hers was the largest gift. Tommy opened his sack wide to take out a whole bundle of green leaves and tender bark. He knew how hard these were to find in the cold of winter. He had thought of his graceful friend when he found the treasure far away in a distant valley. The doe graciously and delicately accepted the gift. The Tompton bowed to her, drew his sack shut and slung it over his shoulder and retreated quietly through the bracken. He walked on quite away, his bright little eyes watchful for hidden gifts. Tommy spied a pine cone that had not released all of its seeds. As he reached for it, a delicate crystal snowflake gently landed on his sleeve. How beautiful it was, like a lacy star. It melted when he reached to touch it. But when he looked up, he saw that there were many more floating down to replace it. By the time Tommy had taken out the rest of the pine nuts from the cone, the ground was almost all white. He walked on, ever hunting for gifts for his friends, leaving a path of tiny footprints behind him. The day was drawing to an end 
The flakes continued to fall silently. Tommy was far from his warm little home. Before him, in the purple dimness, Tommy saw a fat little fir tree lying on the ground. In no time at all, he climbed up under its thick, soft branches, pulling his sack behind him. Once inside his tiny shelter, he saw that he could climb up to the sideways trunk where some branches formed a crib high off the ground. Tommy then cleverly made a soft little bed out of his sack. He ate some of the pine nuts for dinner, pulled his hat way down over his ears and curled up for a cozy sleep. Tommy must have been dreaming of a winter storm, of wind blowing fiercely, for it seemed as though he was being lifted up, 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 and jostled here and there. But Tommy slept on. Then Tommy must have been dreaming of the early spring, of the tinkle of icicles as they melted and broke. He heard such a sweet sound of bells that he smiled in his sleep. Then Tommy must have been dreaming of the summer of the great golden sun beaming down on him. For though he had been cozy in his new little bed, he soon became very warm. On and on Tommy slept. It was only when he heard a popping and crackling sound coming from a hearth and a rustle of wrapped gifts below him that he awoke and to what a surprise. The fir tree trunk he had gone to sleep on was now standing upright. The tree was no longer out in the cold, dark woods, but was indoors in a bright, cozy room. The branches, which had been blanketed with snow, were now twinkling with sparkling ornaments and candlelight. The silence of the night was now replaced with joyful sounds of Christmas. Tommy Tompton shook his head in disbelief. And then something quite unexpected happened. Tommy slipped. He tumbled and rolled right down a soft fir branch and fell with a bump onto a woolly carpet. His empty bag plopped right beside him. He had landed right in front of a little boy, Leon. Leon lived in that house with his mama, papa, and his sister. His sister's name was Lucy. At that very moment, the rest of Leon's family were upstairs tying last minute bows on their gifts. Leon, the first to wrap all of his presents, had just placed them under the Christmas tree. Leon had taken much care making his family special gifts. He had just finished knitting his papa a colorful scarf, his very first knitting project. For his mother, he had transformed an old hinged wooden box he'd found, painting it a pretty blue and decorating it with little birds. For Lucy, he had made a lovely dollhouse table he had cut a thin disc of wood from a branch and added an empty wooden spool from his mama's sewing basket to make the base. He couldn't wait to see their eyes when they opened their presents. So there was Leon 
adjusting the gifts under the tree, when the Tomton suddenly appeared at his feet. At first, Leon thought he was an ornament that had fallen off the tree. Only when the little Tomton got to his feet and brushed himself off did Leon realize what was standing there in front of him. A Tomton! Why, you are a Tomton! The boy exclaimed in amazement. Tommy Tomton, too, was amazed. He was so astounded to be so serious, so mysteriously transported into a house of humans that he just stood there staring up at the little boy's surprised face. In awe, Leon knelt down close to the little gnome and in a hushed voice said, Merry Christmas, Mr. Tompton. Tommy, you must know, was in a predicament. Tomptons do not frequent human houses, and they very seldom ever speak with humans. But then, it was Christmas. So Tommy Tompton smiled up at Leon, and he bowed a very polite bow. Then he delivered yet one more gift. This one was quite rare. Tommy Tompton, the woodland gnome, <clears throat> who himself had never spoken to a human in his long, long life, said to Leon in his clear little Tompton voice, Merry Christmas to you. This is what Leon had dreamt of. The magic had happened. He had seen a Tompton. He had spoken to one. And best of all, the Tompton had spoken to him. Tommy Tompton looked around the room. He looked up at the glittering tree, at the chairs that towered over him, at the glowing fireplace, at the closed front door. Please, the Tompton asked Leon. Would you be so kind to open your door? I should be going now. There is still so much I must do this night. Leon was at first a little disappointed, but he understood. He had so wanted to show the Tompton to his sister that he knew he couldn't keep him a captive, and it was Christmas Eve. So Leon went to open the front door, revealing a world outside that was magically blanketed in white. When Leon saw the Tompton scurry across the room, dragging his empty sack behind him, he had an idea. He quickly reached into the bowl of Christmas cookies his mama had left on the table, chose a tiny star-shaped one, and handed it to the little gnome. The Tompton smiled up at Leon and again bowed. He then opened his sack wide and squeezed what was for him a very large cookie inside. Tommy Tompton then stepped through the vast doorway out into the cold he scampered down the steep front step before he made his way out into the snow-covered path that would lead him back to Limondor Woods. Merry Christmas, Mr. Tompton, Leon called after him once again. Tommy Tompton waved back and then disappeared into the night. Stars, moon, sun, now our story is done. May it rest in our hearts 
and the light now shines from within.